you've seen me talk on you know, Twitter or YouTube or whatnot about stations I've visited, you might have also seen the fact that I have my own map here that shows me and indicates which stations I've been to, which stations I haven't been to, and quite often I'll get quite a lot of people asking me, oh, how do you make that? So here you are, here's a tutorial of how to make your own version of one of these maps to show which stations you have and haven't visited. So first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to go to everylaststation.co.uk slash downloads. Big shout out to Stu for making this website and this download, it's great. You'll want to go here to Every Last Station log and you'll want to download the spreadsheet here. So when you open the PowerPoint, you'll be greeted with this, where you've got station, country, county, TOC, yada yada yada. And what we are interested in really is the station, visited, latitude and longitude. All the others are just gratuitous information, I suppose. And what you'll want to do is if you have a station on here that you have visited, let's just say, for instance, I've been to Achenault Station before, um, you go into No here and you just type Yes, where it automatically turns green and also gets added to this nice handy total you have. It's pretty nice. So once you've started, you can just probably control C the yes and then you can control V for every other station that you have visited. And it might take a bit of time, but you can eventually go through every single station and tick off every single one that you have visited. So just for demonstrational purposes, I'm gonna tick off a bunch of random ones. I'll just go yes, 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 yes. Yes, and so on and so forth. So there we are, there's a bunch ticked off. There's 233, completely random amount, but there you are. Now once you've completed all of this, there is something that you will have to do which will be important later. And that is firstly, you just want to copy this top row and then open up a fresh new Excel spreadsheet and just paste it in at the top. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to scroll down to, here we are, row 2001 and you'll want to copy everything from this row until the bottom. This will be important later. And you'll just want to paste that below all of this. So of course, once you've done this, you'll then want to save both of these spreadsheets that you've created. I'm going to save the first one as very real station spreadsheet one to 2000. And then this second one here that I copied and pasted a bunch of stuff into as Nick's very real station spreadsheet 2001 to 2581. So the next thing you'll want to do after this is you'll want to open up Google My Maps. And then in the top corner here, you can click Create New Map, and then Create. And you'll see in the top corner here, you'll have Untitled Layer, and it'll be prompting you to import. So you'll want to click here, and then click Browse, and then find where you've saved your spreadsheets. And first of all, I'm just going to import 1 to 2000 here. And you'll be greeted with this screen here. So it says, Columns to position your place marks. Obviously, you'll want latitude and longitude, which thankfully it's auto-selected here, so we'll click continue. And then to title your markers, obviously you'll want the station names, so click on station and then click finish. Now this is the point where that second spreadsheet, where we copied and pasted a bunch of stuff into it, comes important, because Google My Maps has a limitation of the fact it can only read up to the first 2,000 rows of a spreadsheet. So you'll see here, everything alphabetically after, I think, Saunders Foot, will not show up on this map. So you can see there's nothing. You'll see, for instance, here, there's no station marked at Thetford where there should be, none at Sheringham, uh, there isn't one at Spalding. So yeah, there'll be 581 missing stations. But thankfully, that's why we made that second spreadsheet. So you'll want to click here, Add Layer, and then it'll come up here with the second layer. Untitled Layer, you'll want to Import, Browse, and then Nick's Very Real Station Spreadsheet 2001, 2581 or however many stations there are at the time of you watching this video. Continue, station, finish. And there you are. We now have every single marker for every single station. As you can see, we now have Spalding and Thetford. So yeah, we're doing very good now. Now the next thing we'll need to worry about is how do we actually make it so that it indicates whether we have or haven't visited. And don't worry, it's not that difficult. So you'll see here in this section here where it'll say uniform style. So you'll want to click on that and then you can do group places by visited here. And of course, you'll want to do this again for the second one where you'll do group by visited. And you'll see it'll automatically group them for whether they're marked as no or yes. And obviously to give them all a consistent color, let's just say this color for no, and then that color will be yes, and we'll make them the same for the other one so that it looks all nice and neat. And there we are. We have markers, as you can see, where it's green for yes, red for no, 
etc. But you may have noticed on my map from earlier, this is entirely optional, but I had my own little custom icons that I made. And you can add your own custom icons by clicking this here, and then clicking on more icons, and then down in the corner here it will say custom icon. And here I've got two of my own map icons that I've made previously. You can do this in any sort of photo making software, even in like Microsoft Paint. Um, they'll have to be fairly small, minus 16 by 16, so that they aren't too large on the map and you can actually see enough detail with them. So right now I'm making it for no, so I'm going to do map.no here and then click open. And then there we are, it's been added to custom icons, I click OK and there you go. All of my no markers have been <laughs> turned into uh, my own custom little dots. And then thankfully it'll be actually quite a lot easier to do for the other spreadsheet as it'll already be on your other icons. So just click that and there you go. And now we need to do the same for all the yes ones. So again, click this, more icons, custom icon, map.yes, which I've called mine, OK, and then click this, this, and there we are. I've got all of my custom map icons. Now with mine in particular, this is entirely optional, but I feel like the contrast isn't great, so what I did instead was click here on base map, where it gives you a bunch of choices for other ones, and I chose Dark Landmass, because I think it gives a pretty nice contrast between the actual markers and actually being able to see the map underneath. And finally, how do we actually update the map once we've visited more and ticked off more from the spreadsheet? Well, that's also quite simple too. So if we go back to our original spreadsheet here, and we add a bunch more yes markers, just like so. This is a comically large amount of them, but it's just so it'll be easier to show on camera. So once you've added all your new yes markers, you'll just want to save the document as usual. And then on your map here, you'll see layer options, where you'll want to click re-import and merge, re-import, replace all items, and then browse. Where you'll find your spreadsheet here. I edited my 1 to 2000 one, so I'll just click that one to open. It'll do all its processing. It will warn you that it's a lot of data, but as long as you've only updated ones that are above row 2000, then it's not that big a deal. And you'll just be modifying the other one instead. Click OK, and there you are. It's been updated with all the new ones I've ticked off. So that is how you make your own map to indicate which stations you have or haven't visited. So, hope you enjoyed. Hope this uh, tutorial was somewhat useful. And uh, yeah, have fun making your own map. So, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.